Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another movie review. Recently, my dad and I decided to watch The Crudes, which I thought is probably one of the best movies I have seen from DreamWorks in a good long while. Well, of course, next to How to Train Your Dragon, which I absolutely adore. <coughs> uh, I really thought that this movie was highly allegorical and, and symbolic. And the reason I say that is because uh, Grug and his family, they don't go outside, they're afraid of anything new, they trust in their old-fashioned uh, methodologies, and um, <coughs> they stay cooped up in, in their cave, never wanting to c explore or do anything um, different or new or exciting. They just want to stay with what's comfortable, what's routine, um, just everything that they are used to. Nothing that will um, challenge them in any way, shape, or form. Uh, they're just going by instinct. And um, this is uh, actually Eep says that the uh, the teenager of the family. She says this this is not uh, living. This is just uh, trying trying to live and um, doing their best to survive uh, just by going by the rules and I think this is a good um, illustration of fundamentalism versus a more um, egalitarian mindset which is what I hope <laughs> I hope to possess um, I really loved all the characters I, I thought that um, Grug was absolutely magnificent. He was voiced by Steve, uh, excuse me, um, <coughs> Nick Cage. And you could really hear Nick Cage's voice come through his character. Um, I I loved Ugga and Funk. And of course, I have, Eve was probably my ultimate favorite character next to um, Guy and Belt. Belt was just the comedy relief. Belt is this... Uh, the sloth that holds a uh, guy's pants up is something that he invented. He's actually more of a pet, but he's also a really great accessory. Who would have thought? He actually made the first accessory. Um, this is such an inventive movie. It's so beautiful and colorful, and it has the same kind of uh, mood that Avatar does. Plus, it also has these creatures that you would think would come from Studio Ghibli or uh, Pokemon, just the way that they're made. And uh, I thought, oh, conglomerate animals, yes! One of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And actually, I really like the piranha birds because they were kind of like starlings in their flight, but they were also really devastating <laughs> and, and destructive and scary. And <laughs> I thought, holy crap. <laughs> because I was not expecting it. It was just something that was a twist for me. Uh, it had a really good message and good morals and just a wonderful a sweeping storyline and keeps you fascinated from start to finish and it's just it's eye candy and the music is absolutely beautiful and the song at the end by Owl City Shine is oh beautiful this absolutely phenomenal just a marvelous marvelous song magnificent I want to learn it I'd like to learn the chords for it and learn to play it and sing it uh, but I like Owl City anyway they're one of my favorite groups <clears throat> Uh, um, as far as a movie for children is concerned, I think this is a movie that both uh, kids and adults can just absolutely love and save her from finish because it's got a lot of heart and it's also very touching because at one point in time I, I found myself becoming overclimped, which I did not really see coming, but it just is something that takes you by surprise and you think, oh, it's so sweet, and then of course you cry. So I give Crude two thumbs way up and five stars hands down. If you haven't seen it, then I would definitely recommend it. If you have children, this is a great way to introduce them to the concept of open-mindedness and imagination and how imagination is power. Um, I also thought that there was kind of a spiritual element to it when they, they talk about following the light. And it, it kind of had that um, whole element of, if you've seen Tales from Earthsea, you probably know what I'm speaking of, when um, when Sparrowhawk's beloved 
um, she talks about um, how she was in the tombs at some point in time. But he and and then she says, but he, but he led me to the light, and uh, I thought, yeah. <laughs> You were uh, actually taken from your desolate state, whatever it was. Maybe it was depression. Maybe it was just meant to be allegorical. Maybe it's a metaphor. Probably. I don't know. But this is so poetic. And um, she she was actually taken from her previous state into a more enlightened one. So I, I thought, yeah, this is, this is about enlightenment. And it's also about how you can't let, you can't let such things as doom and gloom and uh, potential <laughs> wars, rumors of wars, the apocalypse. Oh, the end is near. Uh, yeah, we've been hearing that for quite some time. If part of the rapture, um, I just feel that, yeah, sure we should be prepared for it, but we shouldn't be running around like chickens with our heads cut off because of it. That's just ridiculous. There are people that after a, um, a disaster strikes, there's looting and there's anarchy. Why do you do this? No, you shouldn't do that. And even though it will give you the, uh, the ability to do so, you should be a little bit more rationally minded about such things. You should figure out other ways than looting to get what you need. You can you can get what you need um, if you just wait patiently for someone to give you aid if you need it. Um, but it's always you got to have faith, and it, sometimes faith takes a risk, and and that's what this movie is all about, I think. And it's just such a, a splendidly animated film, and just absolutely gorgeous. And many of the many of the scenes, I was just absolutely um, positively awestricken. I was uh, bewitched by just how lovely it is, especially some of the scenes in the caves, or the 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 way they made the uh, striations in the agate. I, I don't know if it was agate or not. It was quartz and agate. It's your common silica-based uh, formations. And um, I, I'm a little bit of a raw cow, I'm sorry. So for me, I thought, whoa, <laughs> uh, this is my kind of place. But um, it was absolutely um, remarkable, probably one of the best um, children's films I've seen in a good long time. Of course, I, I love DreamWorks animation and How Train Your Dragon was probably one of my favorites of all time. I did like it quite a bit. Um, I have to say that How to Train Your Dragon is, uh, but other other than um, Kung Fu Panda, have, they have been the best um, DreamWorks films in a good long while and they just keep improving and of course um, if any of you DreamWorks fanatics out there like myself you probably know that they're going to be eight of these films. I, how, how are they going to do this? Yeah, I know they have plenty of material to use but I don't know if it'll get um, kind of worn out because I, I have liked the Madagascar films granted and each one has been better than the last and then in the final film doesn't it give you a sense that they have come come home and uh, found a place to call their own and they really shouldn't have to worry about escaping Madagascar but that's the whole point going back to where they came from they are back for, back where they came from they're, they're at the zoo so I don't know I've been reading rumors about that and of course Shrek films are done so no more Shrek films thank God I mean uh, one, one and two terrific. The third one was a real letdown. I, I absolutely hated the third one. Fourth one was really great because uh, I like the whole dimension of uh, Faust involved with that. If you're not in, if you're not uh, familiarized with Faust and then you'll probably understand why I like that particular film so much. Uh, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it as the, the lesson in that one. Um, I haven't seen Turbo, but I'm probably not going to even bother because I didn't like. I, I do like Cars. Don't get me wrong. That's uh, their version of Cars with snails, and eh, I just don't really. I don't think I can relate to it. Indy 500 or not, I'm just you know going to skip it. Uh, Epic and well, Epic was was done by Blue Sky as well as um, Rio, which I both loved. That they're, they're not. It's not DreamWorks. I'm not sure why I would put those two together, but um, Legend of the Guardians, yeah, Legend of the Guardians, I would say, is right up there with, well, I don't know, I, I really like Legend of the Guardians 
much, much better than um, <laughs> How to Train Your Dragon, even though I do love uh, HTD YD quite a bit. But um, LOTG is uh, my absolute favorite of all of them just because I'm such a Joyce fan. And I'm, I don't know if they're going to make more or if they're just going to stay with the one because they, the, uh, there's going to be a Sandman book that I'm going to definitely read. And I'm hoping, hoping beyond hope that they, uh, I'm say, I keep saying they, it's actually Joyce. I'm hoping that Joyce will write uh, the book on uh, Jack. Because Jack, I, I'm not really sure why, but I really like Jack. I, I just think that uh, Jack is a very interesting character, and I've always liked uh, him in, in different stories. Like with, um, I know a lot of people are going to probably give me a lot of flames over this, but Jack Frost um, in the Santa Claus, the third Santa Claus. I'm I'm a big fan. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. And oh, if, if I ever saw the man who played Jack Frost in real life, I would just, you know, kiss him beyond all hope. <laughs> and there would be no escape for me. <laughs> he would be trapped. But he, uh, I know it wasn't the best of the movies, and uh, the, s the second one actually makes me cry quite a bit. Cause it, it just, uh, it's very emotional for me. The third one was, you know, I wrote a fanfic about, um, uh, Jack Frost finding a love of his life or her name was um, Indian Summer and he just calls her Summer it, uh, it's kind of a May uh, May December <laughs> needless to say <laughs> and uh, there was someone said oh there was someone on fanfiction not fanfiction but fan, yeah fanfiction.net who said hey can I borrow this and make fun of it I said sure fine do it I don't care It's it, if you want to make fun of it do it. Do it. I, I don't mind. You, you have my permission to make fun of me. It's, I would love to see what you write. Missed it all you want. And I'm not sure how I got on that topic, and I'm sorry I did. But uh, anyway, if you haven't seen The Crudes, and if you're looking for a really good animated film of, uh, of the same likes of uh, Ghibli film, or it just has that kind of whole um, adventure kind of theme running through it and uh, you shouldn't be afraid of things that are new. You should be uh, you should look forward to things that are new and different and <laughs> unusual and uh, just go forward. Don't don't be afraid. And of course the one thing that Grug says throughout the, the film is never not be afraid but um, actually fear is what keeps us alive. So um, that's a survival instinct, and actually, fear's not a bad thing. He he doesn't condemn fear, and I I like that because uh, this is coming from a person who has uh, suffered panic attacks, and hopefully, I'm going to find some relief from that. So keep me in your thoughts and prayers. It's, it's no fun. It's it's been really bad recently, uh, just because of everything that's been happening in my home and moving things around and getting things out of the house that need to be sold and trying to find a new house and this and that and the other. It's enough to make you go <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm keeping myself very calm, cool, and collected and stoic. But that's all I have to say for today. So I shall see you next time. And blessings to you all. Live long and prosper. Ciao, do they?